It's me, Ari Bassett. Assumptions are not wrong. Some people say never assume. But hold on a minute. You have to make assumptions in life. If you enter a hospital, you should be able to assume that everyone there has some basic knowledge of human health. Unless it's just a janitor that cleans. But if you see a medical doctor, you can at least assume he finished his studies of medicine. If he didn't finish his studies of medicine, he shouldn't be walking there. When a police officer has a routine, routine check on the road, he has a right to assume everyone that's driving a car has a driver's license. Now, he knows that there will be some people without a driver's license. But he has a right to assume if you're behind the steering wheel, you at least know the traffic rules. Let's go further. If someone is a car mechanic, you have a right to assume they know about the parts of a car. They know about the models of cars out there, the bronze of cars. If someone grew up in China, then you can assume they speak Chinese fluently unless they grew up in a migrant community. So, you know where I'm going with this. Assumptions are not wrong. Assumptions are proper. However, assumptions have to be examined. If someone grows up in China, but they grew up in a migrant community, so they barely had contact with the native Chinese people, then it's not likely that they would speak Chinese fluently. But if they grew up amongst Chinese people, all the time, then they do speak Chinese fluently. So yes, it's, it's a high probability that if you grew up in China, you speak Chinese fluently. But there is a small possibility that the case is different. Similar way, you could go to a restaurant and you assume, you can expect, that the restaurant has a license to do what they're doing. But maybe that restaurant is illegal. They open up the restaurant, but they never registered it. That can happen. Now, let's say they have police checks regularly. If you have an area with many police checks, then it's very unlikely that it will be an illegal restaurant. But there's a small possibility it can be the case. Now, why am I talking about assumptions and probability? Because there is a type of assumption we often make often without being aware of it, and we need to unlearn this. Because this type of assumption I'm talking about will get you in trouble, you will also endanger other people with it, and this type of assumption is why a lot of evil on the earth continues. Ready for it? The assumption is they have their reasons, or he or she has his or her reasons. Now, let me explain what I mean with this. Let's say now you walk into a room, all right? And people are just doing what they're doing. And you sit down. You see someone else walks in. And everyone begins to look at this individual and angry maybe to remember about this individual. So later you ask people, what's going on with this guy over there? And they all have something bad to say about this individual. But you notice that the stories about this individual, does, they don't add up. Now, the proof is in your face. They are scapegoating this individual. They're projecting their unrest on this, to this individual. And they do this together, so it's a crime. Now, instead of just admitting that you're dealing with with cowards who just want to transfer their unrest onto a weak, weaker human being, instead of admitting how bad those people are, you tend to say, well, they may have their reasons, maybe this individual did something, I don't know all the facts. Listen, even if you don't know all the facts, based on the facts you have, you can already see whether it's a bad situation or not. Of course, I'm not saying that you with that you can make a complete judgment without all the facts. But listen, you seldom have all the facts in life. 
the Heavenly Father, God has all the facts. You don't. You have to investigate and do research. And even then, you may not figure out all the facts involved. Because the facts may be too many. Instead of just focusing on the facts, you look at the context. Okay. Let's say I would... Let's say... Uh, let me say something. Kevin finished high school. People say, okay, he finished high school, so what? Millions and millions of people finish high school. But now I say Kevin finished high school at age 50. Now, because I give another fact to it, he graduated high school at age 50. Now I think, huh? Age 50? Why did he graduate high school at age 50? That's not how I'm supposed to go. But if I only said, Kevin finished high school, you may think, okay, what's so relevant to finishing high school? But if I gave the other fact to it, he finished high school at age 50, you think, okay, what's going on here? We need to look into it. So I'm not saying that omitting facts is always a good idea. But what I'm to say is that it's the context that matters. So if someone tells you, Kevin finished high school, ask further, okay, where did he finish high school? Where did he finish high school? By asking further questions, you figure out more facts. And now, the more facts you have, you now can check the context. If someone says, can I finish high school at age 17? Okay, that can happen. If someone says, you finish high school at age 15, I think, okay, okay, I need to look into this. Now, it comes down to checking the context. Does it fit? If I say John went to the supermarket to get his groceries, so what? So you should ask, okay, when did he go to the supermarket? Oh, at one in the morning. Okay, he goes to get groceries at one in the morning. People normally don't get the groceries at that time. So normally people are asleep at one in the morning. So my further question would be, okay, so if he went to get the groceries at one a.m., did he go to... Uh, supermarkets open 24-7? If, if the answer is yes, then okay. He may have had a day off next to work. There may be a good reasons why he was up. Okay, there may be good reasons. But let's say now I figure out, I don't mean it, but none of the supermarkets over there are open at that, uh, around 1 a.m. Now it becomes an issue. Because if the statement is true that he went to the supermarket to get his groceries but the supermarket was not open, there are only two possibilities. Either, oh, there are actually three possibilities. One is he never went to uh, uh, the supermarket. Only, or, I mean, he only went towards the building where the supermarket is, but never actually to the supermarket. That's one thing. Another option is that he robbed the supermarket. A third option is that someone over the supermarket for him and on the hand and sold them things. So there are options, there are possibilities. They're not probable, but there are still possibilities. What I'm teaching you here is that it comes down to the context. Does the context match the content? And where a lot of people go wrong is that they assume that if there is a disharmony between the context and the content, especially when it relates to people's behavior, that someone may have their reasons. Let me tell you, this they have their reasons is a coping mechanism in which people don't want to deal with what goes on. Instead of saying, man, I don't want to deal with this, I want to be left alone, they say, well, they have their reasons. Uh, what reasons? Look, if someone is arrested, uh, for driving drunk on the road, well, they should have a penalty, absolutely. But then if you look into this individual, and you find out he's married, and he has four children at home, another question becomes, why is he driving drunk far away from his house where his family is? Ah, uh, he has his reasons. No, 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 no. He committed a crime by driving drunk, engaging himself and other people, but he has a family over there. No family man in his right mind who want to be so far away from his wife and children. And nobody in the right mind would even put themselves in danger 
nobody in the right mind would need it themselves nor others in danger by being drunk by hysteria. So stop saying he has his reasons. Whatever reason there is, the reason is not valid and the reason cannot be justified. So we need, you need to admit something's off here. Okay, let me give another example. Let's say every time you open your mouth, some people get upset with you. But when others open their mouth, they don't have any problem. When you open your mouth, you say facts, you, you tell people you know that something's off, or you call things out. When others open their mouth, you just say what others want to hear. So if only when you open your mouth, people get upset with you, but when others open your mouth, people don't, it's because those other people are saying what they want to hear. You say things they don't want to hear, or they need a victim so they can feel good about themselves, so that means you're a victim. So stop saying they have their reasons. Stop assuming that. This thing they have their reasons is a stupid assumption. It's a cheap way of just wanting to exit responsibility for, to admit that something's wrong with, those, with these people. Look, if others always have a right to speak, except you, okay, unless you are a uh, defendant in a courthouse, that's different. But that means there's another context. But if it's your parents, when your other siblings speak, your parents are willing to listen, but not you, I'm, hey, there's no way you can justify that. Yeah, but maybe, no, 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 no. Your, your parents are out of their mind. Simply admit it. There's no way around it. Okay, what if someone would always expect you to consider them, consider what they want, but they never have, they even say openly they never have to consider you? What if someone would openly tell you that they are a priority and expect you to treat them as priority, but they never treat you as a priority, only when they need something from you? You wouldn't accept it. Because you can clearly see this is not this narcissistic exploitation, this is narcissistic abuse. Any outsider can see this. But you may think, well, my husband has reasons, my mom and dad have their reasons, they have their reasons, stop this, they have their reasons, bullshit. If there's a disharmony between context and content, that means you have the responsibility and the obligation to admit to yourself something is off. And if whatever is off is dangerous, you remove yourself from the situation and you look into what goes on. If it's better to shake dust off your feet and move on, you do that. But you don't just credit people the gray area to think and feel whatever they want without calling them out. Look, I'm not telling you to call people out. Because so, calling people out can intensify conflict. It can even backfire on you. If someone is unstable, and they insist in escaping reality, and that you confront them with reality, what things are going to happen? That will never turn out well. Just understand that this whole assumption they have their reasons is something psychopaths never make. A psychopath, I mean, a narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, they're all reprobates. The Bible calls all them reprobates. Now, their, their, their degrees of reprobation but for the Bible, it's called reprobate. Now, when it comes to reprobates, I mention psychopath now. A psychopath will never just think, oh, they have their reasons. Even if they say it, uh, because it's a cultural thing to say, a psychopath will never just assume people have their reasons. If the behavior or the attitude of someone or a group of people doesn't match the context, a psychopath will just admit, okay, these people are off. These people are hiding something. Or these people uh, just want to take advantage of me or they just want to be left alone and they don't want any responsibilities. The psychopath will face and see the people for what they really are. Most people out there, they are taught by society to hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil. They are taught to mind their own business, look away, I don't bother anyone. And that is a program most people operate by. That's why they're at ease in society. Why? Because they never call things out. They're not a threat to the darkness of the masses.
Why do you think conspiracy theorists are often ridiculed? It's not that sometimes their theories are way off. Sometimes even the police can have theories are way off. A theory is a possible explanation. Now, the possible explanation may not be probable, but still just a possible explanation. And conspiracies do happen. But why are people so upset with the so-called conspiracy theorists? Because conspiracy theorists at least point out something is wrong. We have to look into something. Now, what's the attitude of the public? Leave us alone. We don't want to do that. Uh, okay, I understand you're saying that this case is a bit off, but, but, but it likely have the reasons. And the conspiracy theorists thinking, really? They have the reasons? This situation doesn't end up. The actions committed here don't end up. And you keep telling me they have the reasons? Come on, this also affects you. This is the thing. The mass want to escape. The mass want to flee. That's on their mind. And the masses tend to become violent when they can't escape. And because nobody wants to be the focus of violence because that can end your life or that can, that can, that can cause your lifelong harm and damage, that's why most people just get along with this program. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, mind your own business, look away. If you have no spiritual protection to cover you, I can understand that you tolerate this. But you should only tolerate it because you don't have any, any options yet. You shouldn't embrace it and agree with it. And a lot of people out there, they agree with this satanic program of hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. It's, it's in other order. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, mind your own business, look away. That is a program a lot of people agree with. So based on that alone, the whole idea of the mass being innocent victims goes right out of the window. There are innocent victims out there, absolutely. It's not only children can be victimized, adults can be victimized too. There are innocent victims out there. But when it comes to the masses, the masses are not innocent. They agree to ignore red flags, just be left alone. They agree to shut up everyone who says things they don't want to hear, and they agree to make life hard even on victims who show something is wrong with them, the community. They will always try to blame the victim first, and only when they can't blame the victim, now they will look for some monster to put everything upon. Instead, they might mean, okay, listen, we neglected you, we failed, we want to be better. So think about it. You did not give birth to yourself. You did not raise yourself. You didn't, you didn't give yourself your own first name. Your first name was given to people around you. You did not teach yourself your own native language. You didn't. Others shaped you and raised you. If you added up having a job that pays well, and you end up getting praised later in life, everyone who contributed to you becoming this individual wants to take some credit, rightfully so. How come then when someone ends up wrong, nobody wants to take credit for that? And takes responsibility to do something about it. That alone shows you that the masks are narcissistic. They want to eat and benefit, but they don't want the obligation to maintain and sustain. If a single human being acted that way, we would call him a narcissist, a jerk, a selfish bastard, whatever. How come... How come that when the masses operate that way, as a group, we tend to excuse, saying, well, it's just a culture or whatever. We need to stop doing this. Stop assuming that others have the reasons. Yes, they have reasons, but do those reasons add up? Can those reasons be justified? And should we tolerate those reasons? And this is why so many of you got in trouble. That's why so many of you are in danger. Because you never just admit, okay, these people are off. This whole community is off. So these people are not these people are not sustainable in the long run, and these people are not. I'm saying these people are liabilities in the long run. You have to admit this. 
A lot of people don't admit all these things. Especially if you're part of the crowd who's unsustainable. Listen. Self-reflection is only looking what you did wrong. Self-reflection is also looking where you're at in life. Also admitting what can be better. Self-reflection should also extend to the people around you. They should reflect on other people. Because remember, you did not raise yourself or give birth to yourself. You were raised and shaped by the environment. And even as an adult, you are affected by the environment. So if you want to become better as a human being, at some point you need to address the environment. And if the environment will not change for the better, you must leave the environment so you can change for the better. It's not about blame, just blaming other people. If others are to blame, they are to blame. But I'm not telling you to be obsessed with pointing out the blame for other people. I'm asking you, are you willing to face the facts as they are? Are you willing to also look beyond the facts and look at the context? People can give you facts. They can give you facts saying, oh, in this neighborhood, there's a lot of crime. True. But hold on. All that crime in that neighborhood is crime that has been discovered. There's a lot of other crimes happening in other neighborhoods that's never covered by the media. So it is true that this neighborhood here has crime. And it's true you barely hear about crime in other neighborhoods. But does that automatically mean that this neighborhood is the only neighborhood that has crime? That that's the bad neighborhood and all the other neighbors are good? No, that's not true. So if you only focus on facts, you can still be deceived. You can focus only on facts and come to the wrong conclusions. But it's extremely difficult to come to the wrong conclusions if you look at the whole context. And to look at the whole context, you need to look into the situation. You have to look beyond the facts. However, a lot of people don't want to go there. Because once you go there, you have to deal with the answers. If the conclusion is that the people around are effed up, that the people around you are not sustainable and they're not reliable, then you need to admit this. Even if it includes people close to you, like friends and family. But no, a lot of people don't want to go there. They have this, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, mind your own business, look away. That's the attitude a lot of people have. Because you just want to be left alone and escape. I, okay, I understand. Some facts are hard to swallow. For example, you find out your husband had an affair. Or you find out um, one of your parents secretly wanted to abort you while you, while you were not, not born yet. Or you find out that everyone around you was talking bad behind your back. Or you find out that you've been scammed. I mean, some facts can be hard to swallow. They're still facts. And the facts cannot be changed. Those are facts. However... Even if it's hard to swallow a fact, at some point the fact has to be accepted for what it is. Only accept the facts for what it is and actually go further and find a way to deal with the facts in a constructive way. So if it's painful or harmful things that happened to you, or if people had bad intentions towards you, now you need to know, okay, this is the facts, they had bad intentions towards me, uh, or they did dirt towards me, or something's off, okay, what can I do about the situation? You can't change what happened, and you can't change with other people. So what you should do is actually, you know what? I need to live differently with these people. I need to move on from these people. I need to get myself out of the situation. That's smart. That's wise. But before you can operate in solutions, you need to admit that something is off. And the reason why many people never have solutions in life is because they won't even admit something's off. Admitting something's off takes courage. And let me tell you, that courage is a luxury out there in the world. Many either stay in denial and become addicts, but addicted to attention, addicted to social media, or addicted to drugs or alcohol, whatever. Some remain in denial and they become uh, addicts. Others actively look for others to attack to feel better, so they scapegoat it. But whether you're scapegoating or you're just in denial, becoming an addict is still in darkness. Stop giving people this benefit of the doubt of having just reasons. 
If you say someone has the reasons, you're actually assuming that they have a good reason. Or that they have, they're somewhere, they're justified what they're doing. Stop saying, stop doing that. Am I telling you to attack someone, confront someone, or we've become bitter and resentful towards others? No. Just stop this assumption that others might have the right or, in, or they might be entitled to whatever they've done. If what they've done is not beneficial to both themselves and the community in the long run, if what they've done is not in harmony with God's will, then there is no good reason for it. They're either mentally gone, so they, so they don't, they don't function mentally properly, or they have bad motives. Simple as that. If they're just mentally gone, they need help. And as far as you can, you assist them to get help they need. If you have bad intentions, because you just want to, if you're only to escape all of that, then you need to avoid those people. And if they become too dangerous, you need to take constructive actions to limit their harm. As simple as that. By this whole, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, mind your business, look away, it needs to stop. Well, that's it for now. Keep in agreement with Christ and be at peace.